Saving the best for last here in Prague, how about a salary cap update from the Vertba Garden? Perfectly manicured, the oldest Baroque garden in Europe. And our hotel is right on the garden. You guys actually see the room window right inside that ivy behind me. But this is the city. There's Prague Castle, St. Nicholas Church, and all the spires. The city of, I think, a thousand spires, hundreds of spires, a lot of them. But it's a good time. It's, it's an opulent place. Let's talk about that. And the 49ers have some opulent tastes as far as their salary cap situation goes. To give you the short, sweet update to begin before I delve into a little bit more detail, the 49ers currently have 10 Point seven million dollars of salary cap space left in this 2023 season. They stand to open up more space when they extend Nick Bosa. You can go and check out my proposed contract for Nick Bosa. You can consider it a prediction. I think the 49ers might use multiple bonuses, some triggering later down the line to spread that cap hit out. So I do expect them to save roughly six million dollars by extending Nick Bosa this year. So that means that you're effectively looking after that happens at about $16 million of salary cap space. So some people will say, well, will the 49ers sign an edge rusher? Is Yannick Ngonkwe coming in? Is Robert Quinn coming in? You just name your edge rusher, just name a veteran that might still be on the market. Will they sign such a player? Well, maybe, but there are other potential uses for that money. See, the 49ers have $273 million already in 2024 liabilities. That's next year. And we don't know how big the salary cap is gonna be next year. The NFL doesn't set that until 2024. So the 49ers, this year they're operating with a cap of about 225 million. Assume that it goes up next season. 273 million in total liabilities is a lot, right? So assume that that number does go up to what? 240 million. That would be a big jump. 49ers would still be significantly over the cap. The thing is that unused cap space does carry over from year to year. So if the 49ers don't spend any more money this season, if they carry over 16 million, that helps them bridge the gap and keep this football team sustainable because they've already executed a lot of restructures. At a certain point, you run out of guys that you can restructure. And when that happens, you turn into the Rams. You have to start cutting veteran players when you don't want to. Now, 49ers draft class this year only cost them about $1 million to sign. Why? Because they didn't have a pick until late in the third round. And the rookie wage scale slots money in the draft. So the number one pick is the most expensive, two, three, four, decreasing cost, so on and so forth. If you don't pick until 87, as the 49ers did for Jair Brown, it's going to be cheap against the salary cap. So the 49ers... 2023 draft class hardly cost any salary cap space and their QB room costs only 15 million against this year's cap as we speak. In fact, Brock Purdy currently doesn't count against the cap. He will during the regular season, but right now because only the 51 most valuable contracts count against the salary cap in the off season, Purdy's $887,000 cap hit is not amongst the top 51. That's borderline miraculous, right? So between Lance and Darnold, Trey Lance and Sam Darnold, the 49ers are paying only a $15 million total bill plus $1 million for their draft class. It's the lowest of any team in the NFL for a QB room plus a draft class, right? Only $16 million total of their $200 plus million dollar budget. That allows the 49ers to do a bunch of other stuff and it allows them to potentially carry over significant salary cap space into 2024. And if they want to build a long-term sustainable operation, which they've done so far, but if they want to perpetuate that, it's going to be important to watch every single dollar. And they've done that by minimizing the cap hits of their veteran players. They're using different salary exceptions. Uh, you know, they're finding ways to drive hard bargains with these players, but they have to pay attention to every single dollar because the, here's the metaphor. And there's a river behind me. I'm going to talk about water right now. I don't think that you could see all the way to the river, but you could see, oh gosh, it's so gorgeous here. By, by the way, here, before I get into the metaphor to close this out, behind me, I'm in the Czech Republic right now, behind me there's American property. There's an American flag on top of that building. That is the American Embassy Summer House. So on the other side of that fence, it's the United States. I don't think they'd be too happy if I hopped over to the other side, though. Uh, it's not barbed wire, but the embassy probably is a secure spot. So we'll... You know, we'll go from the U.S. right here. We'll pan back over to the Czech Republic. Kind of like Homer Simpson when he was jumping back and forth. The Australia uh, and U.S. border at the embassy. Australia, America. They, they told them to cut it out. So that I don't want them to tell me to cut it out here. Anyway, the, the metaphor I have for the salary cap is that it's like 
it's like a sink, right? And the sink is picking up water. And that sink at some point is gonna overflow. So you gotta make sure you're letting out water, enough water through the drain, even as water is pouring in, uh, so, so you don't overflow. Because once you overflow, it's gonna make a big mess. The Rams overflowed in terms of the salary cap this past year, and the 49ers are keeping it right under. They realize they can pay their A-list players. They can pay guys like Brandon Ayuk if they choose to pay him after this season. They can obviously pay Nick Bosa. They can pay other players who, who are worth it. But if they start paying too many guys and the 49ers draw that cutoff be, behind the A-list players, they don't pay their Charles Amenahus, their Sansa Mebicoms, right? They let those guys walk. If they pay too many guys, that water is going to run over and you're going to have a mess. It's going to spill out of the sink and you're going to have to start cutting some players. The 49ers don't want to reach that point. And the salary cap gets bigger every year in general, right? The only year that it got smaller was that COVID year. So with the cap situation the way that it is, with it generally getting bigger, you can expand your A-list core. So the 49ers have 10.7 million left right now. They'll have about 16 million left if you factor in the Bosa extension, which will save them money and spread the cap hit out into future years. They can carry money over into the future. That means that they, yes, they do have money to spend right now on a veteran, but they should be prudent with it because if you aren't prudent with it, that sink can run over in future years. You have to be thinking about 2024 and beyond when you decide to spend right now. Hope that clears up the 49ers salary cap situation. And that clears up this trip. Going to be headed off to New York soon here from Prague. Beautiful weather. It was awesome. This, by the way, the Vertba Garden. And that's the Aria Hotel if you want the best stay in Prague. If you even got a nice rooftop out there. There's Prague Castle, St. Nicholas Church. And we're going to pan down into the garden that I'm talking about. And back up to the city. Spectacular. All the way to U.S. property. The American Embassy Summer House. How about that? Prime real estate for the Americans in Prague. And we can zoom in now onto the hotel and the rooftop. Pretty cool, right? It's even cooler, I think, when it's lit up at night. They light these churches up. So that's it. Signing off from Europe. We will see you all on the other side of the pond.